Right, everything you say now is being recorded live from our yeah. studios here in San It's the Nerdy Skateboard Coaching Series. That's not really the intro, but that is kind of funny. That'll be a good outtake, good B-roll. Hey, Joe, I just, I'm so stoked on the progress you've been making. I mean, you built that ramp. What an investment in your life. And then you started right into wanting to understand and master different things in your skateboarding. And this progress you've made is incredible. I mean, how's that feeling for you? It's almost like I peeled layers of uh, onion off my face. <laughs> and now I can yeah, see it. Right. It's not so blurry anymore. The, uh, the, awareness that I've gained in where I am and my body parts in relation to each other and how they fit together and how they affect each other has changed my ability to self-analyze and self-correct. That's incredible. So I great. Yeah. I, I mean, great. the fact that you're doing that and that we now have like this vocabulary, right? We can talk about self-analyze, self-correct, all these things. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. And it's kind of incredible um, just to watch you go through the process because now you're coming to me telling me, Hey, I did this, but I didn't like how this felt. And I think it's because of this thing that I'm seeing. And it's awesome. Just awesome to see that change. So yeah, I mean, you're now giving me feedback before I can even give it to you. That's incredible. <laughs> you're, you're becoming a coach, right? Which is, I think what part, probably what you really wanted. It is. I want to be able to go out and have a vision about what I want to do and then build the progression that takes me there. It's something that's been really revealing to me is I've been skating for over 40 years and I've always, I, I've never had a vocabulary to describe my, what I'm doing. And so it's kind of like I've gone from being illiterate to being literate. Now I have more words to describe my feelings. And my, my sensations, it's really a, so much about sensations that's helping me improve. I think the most telling thing is that you've been telling me about how you are helping your friends when they come over to skate. You've given me a bunch of stories about how you're now coaching, you know, this friend and that friend. And when they realize this thing that you did, and then you're coming up with creative drills. Like, you've, I mean, this is really cool. This is what skaters do. This is what skaters should do, right? They should help each other this way. And the best way to help each other is to find a, a base of understanding like you just described and then you've got a good thing there it, a good a, raised a good point yeah i'm teaching skaters okay well i'm usually the worst skater and so usually i just keep my <laughs> mouth shut and work, work out what i'm doing but with the the tools that you've given me for rotary alignment and the effect of head blocking shoulders blocking hips all of this i'm so excited about the improvements that it's brought my skateboarding that I can't help but you know, share this information, <laughs> these tools with skaters who are way better than me. And I do it not, uh, not like, like I'm, a, I'm a teacher telling you this is the way it's done. I say, wow, that was awesome. And I'll say, have you ever tried this? Or I've been working on these drills. Um, I'm only doing it down here and you're doing it up there. But you know what I noticed was this. Can you show me how that works with you and tell me what you feel? And people experiment and they go through the same process. It took me an hour to go through it. They usually do it in like a minute. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, that's they're, they're like 14 year old or 16 year old, really good skaters. And the cool thing is here I am a skateboarder who's not as good as these people who's helping them improve. I'm, I'm giving them a tool to help them improve and they recognize it. Well, a, honestly, lot, a number of times they've just gone, huh? <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'll just, I'll say this and then we should get into fully analyzing what you've been doing because you're the homework you've done is awesome. But right. I, can, I can honestly say this, that I coach, I mean, I coach athletes to the highest level Olympics, X games, that kind of thing. And I will tell you that they do things I will never do. And it wasn't until I understood what you were realizing now, the ability to analyze and, and really connect the dots between what you're doing and what you're feeling that um, I was able to coach at those higher levels. And and now it's, you know, it's never about being the smartest person on the team. It's more about just helping people walk through what they're feeling and what they understand. And, and the more you can create a connection to like, Hey, I just felt this and this happened. And you can create those connections through, you know, discussion and through video 
that's how you make a difference. I mean, it's kind of psychoanalysis for skateboarders. It, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, in many ways, skateboarding is life. So on, on that, I wanted to get into um, the homework I had you do because I had you, I had you start working on this, uh, this whole process to get to your 50 fifties. Right. And I asked you to do some Tic Tac stuff. You sent me a great video and Tic Tacs and kick turn circles. And let's, I want to pull it up on the screen and then talk about why I had you do that. Cause you know, uh, hopefully it, hopefully it makes total sense. <laughs> it didn't. I was, I thought I was dealing with Mr. Miyagi again. It's like wax on wax off bit. Cause well, you, here I am, I'm trying to do 50 fifties on coping. And you're telling me to do Tic Tacs in the flat. I totally did not see the connection. <laughs> right. And now well, I do. I mean, but yeah, I am. I'm, I am Miyagi. I am Mr. Miyagi you. It, it's a brilliant thing for you to go through and learn muscle memory and then go, oh, that's why I needed to do that because now I, I draw the connection. So with these, with these, um, with the different drills that we're working on, whoops. I'm, so the reason why I had you do this is because I want you to feel what it's like to tip and start to carve before you pick up and turn. And much to the, what you're talking about, the Mr. Miyagi effect, if you will, is uh, if we went right to a 50-50 and I said, hey, you got to carve into a 50-50. That's like me telling you just to pull your knees up on a giant backside air or something. Like, it's not that simple. Let's, let's get a, a framework of understanding so you can feel something. And then I go, okay, I want you to put that into your, your uh, axle stall. Because really, a 50-50 is just an axle stall that you carve into. And so that's what we're working towards. And I know you, you made that connection earlier when we were talking about it. it was, it's awesome to see. I like seeing those light bulbs come on. You know? and, and the reality is, is that a lot of teaching is like this process of discovery um, where you, you give people things that they can do, that they can get their, they sink their teeth into without being afraid. They can feel some things. And then you connect those things together toward their goal. And it's like, whoa, all of a sudden I have it, you know? Here you are. I think we're, we're doing some kick tack, uh, tic tacs here. Perfect. I mean, let's just go back and watch that. I want you okay, to so we watch this in slow motion. You're going to see the most important thing happen probably right here. Watch your board tip towards the heels right there. Okay. Now this is amazing. And I'm just going to draw some stuff on screen here just because I like, I want to illustrate. Okay. So right here, right? Your board is here. Your core is now balanced here, right? So in, in all, in all fairness, you've shifted your core this way. It's my little makeshift arrow. You shifted your core that, that way to essentially create momentum. Now in a tic-tac, this is the most important thing in a tic-tac that most people miss is that you have to tip over the edge of the board you want to turn to turn toward before you pick up and do the little kick turn. So if you do that, that movement, of your core moving inside is actually creating energy that turns into acceleration. A lot like pumping a skateboard, which we'll, you know, we'll get into that later. But every time I shift my core, get the board to tip, it starts to carve. Now I've created an opportunity that if I pick up, I, I'm, I'm essentially starting to feel like, and you'll probably relate to this and tell me if you do. When you get inside, there comes a point where you want to pick up for fear of falling down just a little bit, right? Does that make sense? I, I feel like the skateboard is, it is coming underneath me to stop me from falling. Yeah, that, the pickup, it's the save. So you've committed your, your body, your mass so far inside the turn, over the heels, that if you don't pick up and do a kick turn and put the board back underneath your body, you're going to fall down, right? Right. That's exactly the feeling. That's the feeling you want to have in a tic-tac. It's incredibly important because that's how you build momentum in a tic-tac. You throw yourself inside, right? You just get it, get over the edge. Then you pick up and catch, you pick up the nose, let it turn and you catch yourself. Then you cross back over, throw yourself to the other side until you're about to fall down. Then you pick up and catch yourself. Does that make sense? It does. So this is, I mean, this is the critical stuff. Let so me. there's that pick up and catch. Now you just had acceleration right there. You started accelerating. Now, interesting thing, look at how much more powerful you are. Look at the, how big the move is when you go to your heels. And most people are this way. They create a lot of power going to their heels. Heel side kick, you know, uh, kick turns in circles or heel side tic-tacs. Um, they actually, most people create a lot more speed this way. 
but watch how far you move. I mean, look at that big commitment over the heel side that created acceleration. Now, when you come back to the toes, note, not nearly as much. There's not nearly as much movement. You didn't let yourself transfer very far over the toes before you picked up to catch yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I see. So there's less commitment there. And if you want to accelerate more on the toe side and by the way, get better at your backside 50 fifties, right? Cause it's the toe side kick turn in the Tic Tac that helps simulate the backside 50 50. If you want more confidence, you need to get to that point where you're starting to feel like you might fall down before you pick up your nose. Uh, okay. So a little bit of homework for me. I'm right. I'm making notes right here. Cause yeah. I, I like to do this stuff in detail. So I'm going to do a, a Tic Tac video showing me with my weight further over on the toe side. Yeah. I want your weight to move more this way. Got it here. You know, before you pick up the nose, you can see the nose is already off the ground right there. Can you see my cursor? I can. Yeah. Yep. So your nose is already off the ground right there. I want your mass to move this way a little further before you pick up. So you start to actually carve a little more into the toe side or what's called a backside kick turn. Um, and Tic Tac is just a, a simple reference to front side, backside kick turns back and forth, right? Okay, so I'm gonna carve, I'm gonna lean over the, the toe side edge and carve a little bit before lifting the, the nose. Yeah, and front something side. really cool. Now I want you to listen to your wheels. When you, when you tip far enough, listen to how the wheels accelerate. This is a really cool thing for you to recognize at home. So listen to your wheels. Hear it? Well, I hear the thumping and the squeaking. Listen to the whoosh, that whoosh, that whoosh, the wheels. It's the wheels spinning faster. It's your bearings, right? Listen again. I want you to listen closely. When you pick up the nose, listen for the back wheels and bearings the sound that they make. You're going to hear an acceleration of those bearing, bearings, okay? Let's back it up. This is just really cool for people who are, are auditory, who listen to things to learn. Um, can you hear that? Because on mine, I hear it, and I hope people at home will hear this. Listen for the sound between the tick, the tongue, tongue, tongue. There's a little sound in between. It's a whooshing, whirring sound of a wheel spinning. Got it. Okay, yeah. now I can hear it. It took me a while to get sensitive to it. When you listen close, you hear, hear your wheels accelerate. Now, if I go back to that first one, um, the first time you were doing them, I think listen to specifically how much of that sound you hear going to the heels versus to the toes. It's just a cool little exploration and coaching just for you to understand. Listen. Did you notice, did you notice that it's a longer duration to the heels? Sure. You bet. I guess it's really obvious. Um, and that's, that's because you're more committed to tipping towards the heel side. You're getting a longer kick turn towards the heel side, your board is carving more, you're accelerating more when you go to the heels than when you are to the toes. Well, it looks right. to me like my front side is, the, what I'm actually doing, my backside is recovery or reset. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is cool, this is you doing the circles. Yeah, and here I was, I was messing around with my head position. I was, I was looking forward and also looking back to see how it would affect things. So now, which did, which did you like better? You like it when your head oh, was looking forward over my shoulder for sure. Yeah, when you're looking over your shoulder, right? Otherwise, I felt like I was blind and falling if I was looking yeah. back. Yeah, and you don't head. commit as much too when you're looking back, like you had your hand out there. It's you really like your hand. You don't commit as much to the heel side turn, do you? No, it's I a like, tentative feeling. Let's watch your back sides here. Now just watch and see if you feel like you tip a lot to your back. There's not a lot of movement there. You're getting inside though. You definitely are. There, see, there it is. There was one. Did you see that one? Hold on. Yeah. Let's back that up. Let's back that up. Right here. Okay. Now watch right here. You're going to get a pretty good move right there. You're really, let's see. I think it's this next one. Look at this move. You're about, look at all that. Move oh yeah. I didn't even notice that. 
that move right there, that commitment inside, well, it felt like you were losing balance. That's actually you committing to the toe side carve and, and creating more movement, which means more acceleration, more, more commitment, more confidence. Look at this. I want to show you, I want to point out something really specific here. Um, let me take that back. Let's do an arrow. Okay. So I want you to look right here. Okay. Do you see how tipped your board is along this obvious. line? Super obvious. That's what I'm talking about. That's that carving sensation that you want to feel when you lead in to a 50, 50. Oh, I, I remember the feeling of doing that now. <laughs> That's and awesome. Was, I was scrambling to make up for being off balance. So yes. like you said, I was compensating. So what, I, I get it. I can do it. Okay, cool. Now, I had you do another drill where I asked you to do basically a, 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 a modulation, a simulation, sorry, a simulation of a backside 50-50 down on the tranny. I want to want to take a look at that. You did them on your bank and your tranny. I'm going to show you the bank one first. So we'll look at that one first. Yeah, you told me to do it on the tranny and I, I tried, I did it there. It was, it was uh, pretty sketchy because it's a continuously train changing transition. So I turned around and did it on the bank. Bank was right. way easy. Okay, well, let's look at the bank one first because that, that definitely will show the ease, but we'll, we'll look at both. Um, right. And as I got into it, after I'd done a couple, it got better. <laughs> This is the, honestly, this is such a great drill here. I'm going to get you fast forward a little bit. Here we go. Here's your first one. 50-50, grind and release, right? So you're just doing a half kick turn, ride and balance and release. The cool thing is you're learning something really important here. You're learning that to stabilize when you're going across the bank, you actually have to stand up or upright on your board towards the top of that transition. In this case, towards the top of the bank. Right, so if you watch one, just watch it, watch it closely. See that little rock back? I'll take it back real quick. I was going back on my heels. I could, I yeah. could see. That's exactly right. So when you do this, here it comes. There's the kick turn. Now you land, and now watch. There's that move back to your heels right there. Can you see it right here? Sure. Back to your heels. Your board, if you look down here at your board, your board actually flattens out. It's not tipping towards the toes anymore right there. Right, it's parallel with the ground, the bank, 20 degrees. That's the scariest thing to do in a 50-50 grind, is to get up on the coping and then stand up on it and be, be okay with that and then fall back in. So yeah. you have to carve into it to get momentum going across. Then as soon as you, as you lock on, you have to stand up, right, like you're doing now. You're upright on it, balance for a second, just a little, just a hair, right? You're not trying to put the back wheels down on the deck, but you're trying to upright. Then you have to recommit back in and let's see if you recommit back in. It's coming. There it is. You're starting to move. There it is. There's commitment back in. You just tip the board back towards the toes before you picked up. So that's that same skill you were building doing the kick turn circles and the tic tacs, exact same skill, right? Applied twice. So you get it once as you move in. And I love it because you're not going to, and one thing that I want to point out here in a second, right? But you get it once here. I want you to note, not a lot of carve before you pick up. See how straight you're going? Mm -hmm. Yes. I was deliberately trying to break it up like that. Should I have been carving? Well, that's what we're going to get to. So that's your next drill. So when you practice this, this drill again, you're going to do this drill again. I want you to practice carving into it, then landing 50-50, then coming out of it so that you're carrying more speed across that bank. Does that make sense? Got it. Cool. So, but the thing I like is, again, this is you not committing to your toes very much. So look at how flat your board is right here. When you do, when you pick up your wheels right there, notice you didn't tip really at all towards your toes. If you look at your board, again, right down here at that point, you can see that the deck is not tipped towards that back wheel at all. So there's no carve happening. Make sense? Got it. What are the feeling I remember then was that I was uh, tentative. And so I was sort of tippy toe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to stay away from it. I was like, okay, I want to get in the water, but the water's cold. You know? Well, you, you got that beautiful pool coping on your high, the higher tranny that you want to grind. This is what we're working up to a backside 50, 50 on that high pool coping, right? And you're tentative doing it on a flat bank. 
<laughs> so we got to get to where this is easy and then we apply it to that coping, the same tactics. Okay. Um, so again, now watch here, here you pick up, oops, let me get back into this. Sorry. There's your pickup into your, in your kick turn, right? So there's the one tic tac kick turn move where you didn't carve, you didn't commit to your toes. But then the beauty is, look, over here, you fully commit to your toes. You're actually getting carved right there. I'm going to pause it right there and show you something Obviously, again. My, I could feel my center going to my back foot. So it was, it was a forced yeah. wheeling. Well, absolutely. And also, look, your board is tipping. A lot. Right. Look at the tail, the, this, the sort of back end of your board, back edge of your toe side edge here getting close to your wheel. That tells you that your trucks are flexing and you're committing. This we gotta do on the first move and then as we come back out. So we commit in, we upright as we talked about, then we commit back in and kick turn out. Does that make sense? So it's commit in, kick turn across, then it's upright. Then it's commit in over the toes and kick turn back down into the tranny. So now I'm doing it, I'm committing, I'm carving out, but not in. So I need to work on carving in as well as out. Right? Amen, brother. And I'm so glad we did this drill first because now you're in this place where you know exactly what you got to feel when you go out and work on this. And what it's going to feel like is faster. That's, that is what it's going to feel like. That's what makes the 50-50 kind of scary because when you start to get good at them, you're going faster and faster across the coping. And and if you wanted, let's say, let's just use the example. If you wanted to carve all the way around a bowl corner, right, a pool the shape of a pool, a long corner, a long grind. You need a, you need a lot of speed. You need an accurate approach, which means you're going to have to carve and commit to that turn shape so that you can carry speed into that grind to make it all the way around. If you want to just grind a few inches, then you don't have to carve nearly as much on the way in. Does that make sense? Um, awesome. Let's I'm, the training just so we can just, just for the fun of looking at it. Cause I thought they were actually really good. I know they didn't feel good to you, but that's just because it's kind of unnerving, I think. The moves I haven't done since the 70s because I thought <laughs> I was beyond it. Now by walking me back through the fundamentals, I'm, I'm really improving the foundation for my skating. It's making me a lot more confident. Right. And I appreciate your willingness to do this. I mean, when you ask me to coach you, um, it's like, how do, how do you coach a great skater? Because you're a good skater. You skate really well. You've got all these, you've got tricks. I mean, but there's been a few times where you've come to me and said, hey, these are things I've always wanted to learn. And I go, okay, well, this is easy to learn. And you're like, no, it's not. It's take, I've been working on it for 30 years. I'm like, well, you know, sometimes you just need that helper who maybe has a different pathway, a different plan, you know, a different perspective to, to make you think about things differently, you know, and that's all it really is. Okay. Let's look at these. Let's just watch a couple. Oh yeah. I see. Again, I think these are really good. One, Let's see if we see that commitment to the toe side edge. Look at that. That's a carve, man. There's commitment to the toe side edge right there. Funny on the tranny, you actually carve them a little bit. Look at that. How much more my back leg is bent than my front? My back ankles are bent. My back ankle. In the approach? Yeah. That's, that's this. Remember we talked about rotary alignment before? Thanks for bringing that up because this is important in all your skating. You're learning new stuff, so you're going to forget the the – the stance and the, and the rotary stuff that, that you can work on when you isolate it. So don't feel bad about that, but right here. So right here, your hips are kind of pointed along this line, right? Shoulders kind of along this line. And what that does is it means that when your hips open relative to your front foot. So take a look at your front foot. Your front foot is along this line, right? When your front, when your hips open, past perpendicular to that front foot, right? So if your hips turn and the line of your hips is beyond perpendicular, so if this is perpendicular, now it's like beyond, then, and you're opening your body towards your direction travel, then your front leg is gonna, is gonna straighten out, meaning the ankle is gonna go from flexed here to more upright. And so your shin, your lower leg is gonna tip this way, and your back ankle is gonna go and flex more and that shin is going to tip that way. So when you look at those, you got those lines too. You can clearly see the difference in those lines 
right there between the front leg and the front leg and the back leg right there. Um, so that's an alignment thing you can fix that will actually help you commit and tip more towards the toe side edge before you pick up. So if you want to feel more comfortable in those cars, get aligned, get your mass moving over the toes, uh, through both ankles, you know, both legs, um, you'll be in better shape. Make sense. So I should either bend my rear leg less or my front leg more and bring them more into uh, e equilibrium, right? Yeah. And then you can check that by, are, do you feel like you're standing more forward or, you, or do you feel like you're standing more sideways? And just a good, you know, visual reference for you, feel reference in your ankles. Does it feel like your back ankles binding more, like tensing more, or is it more relaxed in your front ankle? Do you feel any of that tension? Do you feel any of that tension building? Cause you want to, you know, you, you definitely want to get to where you're feeling some of that in both, but relaxed, still relaxed. What I see here is I'm <laughs> open. I yep. have an open stance yep. on a backside turn that I'm facing the opposite way I should be facing on a backside. It's kind of one of those like no doy mo moments, right? Where you're like, why am I doing this to myself? Why, why am I making this trick harder than it should be? And, and that's all that's really happening. The, the truth is, you know, skaters compensate for this all the time. A lot of skaters skate open like that and they just figure out how to compensate, which you can, but it limits your potential in some way. In some way, it's probably going to limit your potential. So I'd say line yourself up, give yourself a better opportunity to, to be aligned towards the toe side edge and tip towards the toe side edge and you're going to have better success. So if you watch this one through, I noticed, you know, it's funny. I say you carve right here. You are, I can see it carving towards the toes, but then I go back on my heels right here, right there. You're already back on your heels. So there's that move, but you, that, I mean, look at, you're definitely tipping over the toe side edge. So you've got some movement into the toes, which is good. You, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Now here, right here, check your alignment. Are you open or aligned stance relative to feet and board? I'm much more aligned than I was, but I'm still open. You're still open, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's you. That's you right here. Watch. You tell me what gets the board around. Is it your upper body leading the lower body or does your lower body lead the upper body? Uh, it stops. It changes right there. Exactly. I, I, it went from. And, and, and this, is, this is the feeling that I had. I, I yeah. felt like I was smearing and sweeping, <laughs> compensating with my lower body. It's like my lower body was catching up and passing. Yeah. Like, I was forcing the kick turn. Yep. And that's, that's because you're open here. Your hips stay open right there. Your shoulders stop rotating right here. As soon, as soon as you pick up, by the way, if your shoulders have stopped rotating, when you pick up, you're probably not going to feel very fluid and your, your shoulders are going to stop feeling like they lead and the lower body is going to catch up. Now there's another thing going on. You're, you're cog, you're intuitively, leaving your shoulders open to stop the kick turn, which is foreign to you. This is a new thing. You'll get to where you can control the kick turn without opening up, without countering your upper body against your lower body um, through rotation. Now, right here, nice move. You rotate the shoulders, you tip in, and you start coming back in. You're a little bit behind, though, wouldn't you say? Like, oh, does this sure. – It's what's that? Uh, for sure. I was trying to push my legs forward for, out from underneath my body right there. I think my shoulders need to be way further ahead. Absolutely. You're, you're forcing the nose down by extending the lead leg and working the hips and legs around instead of, I'm going to freeze you right here, put a little couple arrows on screen for you, instead of taking your mass, right, and tipping it this way more, taking this, these shoulders, right, the line of these shoulders, and pointing them more this way. So we get them, let me erase that one right there uh getting the line of those shoulders a little more here probably before you before you pick up so if you watch right here look at your line of your shoulders stayed on that first arrow never pointed to the second arrow you see that mm. yes kind of, they're still not there even even though i'm on the flat already sure yeah even on the flat your, <laughs> your shoulders are still pointing across your board so that's an awareness thing for you as you build confidence try to get in there and correct that too. And I know you're the kind of person you're going to go out there and do it today. You're going to be like, all right, I'm going to go fix this right now. <laughs> yes. But the, <laughs> go ahead. No, you go ahead. 
Oh, I'm totally ready. I, I, this, I love this micro improvements because for me, it's safe. Right. And it's comprehensible and I can do it. You've given me something that I can go for. I'm ready to go right now. Watch just, you know, watch a couple more here. That's a carve in, right? And you can see it's, it's under finished, but just watching it in regular speed, you definitely see a little bit of the upright to, to balance for a second. Yeah, you see the little upright move? Can you see it? And also the way my front uh, swung it. Can you back it up one? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Really good, I believe. There you go. Okay, that let's one? That, please. Yep. Now, watch. Okay, go. Uh, stop. Okay, go okay. ahead. Just slow, slow motion it. Okay, now I'm fairly parallel. Now my front shoulder is dropping down as I do this. It is, yeah. Yeah, you're trying to compensate for that openness by bending at the waist, which is okay. It's an okay way. That's how a lot of skaters compensate. But I love what I'm seeing too. Also, now, if you walk. Now is the point that it's coming up, the point that I want to point out. And that is that I'm, I bring my shoulder around before my board. So much better. Look at that line of the shoulders. That's awesome. I'm glad you caught that one. Because that, that's much more correct, isn't it? Right there. And a lot, and, less, and a lot less separation right there. Yep. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Wow, really, really good. Another thing to point out again is watch the upright move after your first kick turn right here. I go back. See that back move right there? Right. From here and your hips go back. That's you flattening the board out so it's not tipped towards the toes. You're flattening it so it stays straight. Same thing has to happen on the coping when, you're, when it's time to grind. You've got to carve in, upright onto it, carve out if you want to think of it that way. And again, Get comfortable doing tic tacs and kick turns like this, where you're doing multiple turns on the face of your transition. So, a good drill for you for today. Let's move, we can move on to homework, right? Okay. Um, a good drill for you today would be to go out there and see if you can do four micro kick turns across the face of your transition. So, in, like, in a single, I go up and I go, tick, yeah, tick, you're tick. like, and you're like, here, here, here here, here, as many as you can do and roll a little bit between each one, roll a little ways between each one. Get okay with adjustments because hey, getting up onto a coping, if you're not ready to adjust, right, you're not ready. So, so practice some adjustments on training. Um, the next thing I'd really like to see you do is over here on your, your lower tranny right here. Right. Um, you've been doing a great job. I, your axle stalls, even your, your 5.0 stalls are awesome. On, on that tranny. And I know you've been practicing some, some stalling up on the higher tranny, but on this low tranny, let's go for a grind. Seriously? Right? Yeah. Let's, let's Here. go for, I mean, if you feel ready, I'm not going to push you, but I feel like you have a lot of the foundation. So practice the drill. I just asked you to do with all the micro adjustments. If you're feeling good, if you can see my cursor, come in right over here. I'm going to draw you a path. This will be fun. So I'll freehand this one. So come right, in over here. That, just so you know, that, just yeah. so you know, the 50, 50, slide to me is terrifying and that's one of the reasons i want to do it because i want to overcome that fear and, and get that really smooth move that i see pool skaters doing well the biggest fear that most people have is that they you're going to get on it you're either going to get hung up on the coping or it's going to slip out from underneath you these are two really wow. big fears right? right so the first way to address fear number one is to get your body in alignment so all these little adjustments we're doing with the the kick turns and the tic tacs on the tranny that's to help you find feel for alignment when you stall out halfway through a kick turn so that when you hit coping, you're going to be less afraid. All the alignment drills we did on the axle stalls, that's to get you stable and aware of where you're at so that when it's time to execute this 50-50 this and actually grind, you're not like dipping your toes in the water. You're going to make the moves and you're going to land on that coping in a stable position that gives you the best chance of grinding successfully, right? So that's how we avoid the, the slip up, the banana peel thing. Okay. The next piece is we've worked a lot on you clearing your, your, front, your uh, front trucks, your front wheels in all kinds of variations. Think about all the different drills we've done, right? So you, you've done a lot of work on kick turns in general just to know, hey, where's my weight and can I pick up? The only way your front wheels get hung up in a grind is if you do not have the control or balance to pick the front wheels up. If you can't pick the front trucks up, front wheels up, you can't clear them from the coping. You don't have that problem. The tail is not going to hang you up. The back wheels will not hang you up. And 
I know, I know because I've seen you do this and I want you to do it on your higher coping. I want to see you get some axle bites where they're little five O's where you go up and you're just making a kick turn and you feel that back axle bump the coping and it doesn't stop. You just kind of, you're committed. It goes, it rolls right through. The only way that back axle would get hung up is if you uprighted so much that your wheels, let me grab my skateboard really quick. Well, you want me to do a bite? I'm going to start with a nibble, okay? <laughs> just, uh, I just want to just touch it on there. I love it. N nibble away. Well, the only way that this back wheel is going to get really hung up on you is if when you come up and you do that nibble, right? And you're just touching in here. If you uprighted and you slid all the way back here onto the deck, so all the way back there, and now you're way out over the deck, now you've got a chance to hang up. But in the, in the little axle nibble, the little 5-0 nibble you're going to do, your back wheel is just going to go up and it's just going to roll up over and you're going to touch and then you're coming right back in. So you just, okay. your back wheel is going to go bump, bump at most. You, may, you might not even feel it. So you don't have to worry about that hanging up. We're not hanging up the back trucks. Your front trucks are clear. Um, when you go to do this 50-50, look at this path I'm drawing for you. And I'm not drawing a very straight line. I'm not so good with the mouse. But we're going up along this edge, as close to this edge as we can. We're going to get a, a tiny bit of car right about here, right? So that's our line. Can you see that shape right there? Just fine. Um, what's that? I can see it fine. Okay, perfect. Now, what I want you to do is I don't want you to panic about reentry. I want you to grind, and I want you to try to bump in to this right here. That little piece of tranny, that's like your little safety net. You get up on the deck and the first few times you're probably going to get up on your, on your heel wheels and roll across the deck and bump into that, into that little piece of tranny right there and do that a few times. And if miraculously you, you, you do that and you feel stable, right? Cause it's just a halfway step. Go ahead and pick up and come back in if you feel it. Right. But you don't have to, I just want to see you bump in, bump in, bump in, and just get used to grinding across that low tranny. That'll be a great first step. So you've got some homework, right? Your homework right. is practice the kick turn, the multiple kick turn drills um, on the tranny and get used to, to running your board across the tranny in diff at different angles and different moves and corrections. Get good body alignment going so you feel confident and stable and comfortable when you do that. Then we're going to go for a little axle, as you called them, nibbles. I like that. Little axle nibbles where you're doing a, a backside kick turn and you're just clipping the coping and coming right back in full commitment. Then when, when you, if you feel that you have it and you're feeling uh, uh, confident with it, take it to that outside track and see if you can grind that lower, that lower tranny and, or grind that lower coping and bump into the wall there. And right. after you've done that a few times, you know, who knows? If you send me a video of you doing a backside 50-50 and then you drop back in, I'm, we're going to be celebrating in the next one. Right on. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, you're welcome. Great job, Joe. Our goal is to help you learn how to skateboard and understand more about skateboarding. If this video helped you, be sure to hit us up in the comments below and tell us what you'd like us to focus on for our next video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and then subscribe to our channel and tell your friends all about us. If you'd like to learn more about the United States Skateboard Education Association, please visit www.ussea.us where you can learn more about how to skate, learn more about helping others learn how to skate, and become a certified skateboard coach.